bells on the corn. So we're not able to pick today. It's cold out. Sun's out, so it's kind of making a little bit sticky, so it ain't going to be able to pick probably. So My brother had a gathering chain break, and uh, this year's been really tough on chains, bringing in all that residue. If you've seen my last videos, you know what I'm kind of talking about. But um, his would have been fine in a normal year. It's just this year just put a lot of wear, grabbing all that extra crap going through. So uh, what we're doing, since we can't do anything today, is we're probably going to rebuild this head or put new chains in sprockets on this head over the winter, but might as well do it now. Deer's got what you call a Romax upgrade kit. You get the couple gathering chains. And what it is, is it's essentially just an upgrade kit to make it a little bit more like their later 700 series head. We have the 600 series head, uh, the later model ones. I think his is a 2015 model, if I'm not mistaken, and mine's a 14, but... I don't think mine are as bad, but he's, he's blowing it off. Then we'll just start replacing it. So we kind of got started digging in on a one right here. But once we got part way through, we realized we're missing uh, part of the kit that goes up on top here. There's a bushing, a couple other things. Not, not much, but it's enough that it held us up. So uh, my brother ran back to uh, Lexington to grab some parts to finish this up and then we can take all these apart we kind of wanted to do one just to kind of know the whole process then we can kind of set up maybe kind of an, an efficient process to do all these in a, hopefully a timely manner we could get this done right now i'll kind of show you what we'll do with these we're not replacing the deck plates right now but we made these pieces so we can slide them together because you want to have your deck plates well I'll start off, these are your deck plates right here, these two shiny pieces. And what they do is that ear will come in, and as it's coming down, it'll pull, rip it off the stock, and then these gathering chains will bring it up into your auger, and then that'll send it up in, into your feeder house over there. But you want this front to be just a little narrower than your back. So when that initial stocks comes through, it has a little bit of more gap for that trash to kind of get pulled through. And so we, to easily measure, we made these, oh, I don't know if it's been a few years or last year, I can't remember, but um, just so we can slide those together and make it easier to measure. But no, these Romax kits, they'll take these plastic guides out on these older ones and uh, We'll change the chain. I think the chain on these are, they have more links. They're closer together versus these older ones. And so these um, sprockets have a little more teeth in them. So it's kind of a whole whole different kit. So so we'll see when it gets back and uh, yeah. No. So I guess these are technically useless now, but We'll go from there. So that was probably slightly ambitious today to kind of rebuild our head, but um, no, Tom's in there, he's finishing it up. He's got all this, he's doing all the 
adjustments you got to have those um, uh, deck sorry the, the, sorry all those deck plates adjusted right and all those things just kind of fine-tuned and I'm gonna let him finish it I can't really do much and plus that way if they're all out of whack or something's left loose it's his fault so and it's his head I could I told him I could only imagine the call I'd get on the radio if I screwed something up on his head so uh, no, but I'm going to head home, eat supper, and uh, spend the rest of the evening with the family. Hopefully tomorrow, enough snow melted off the corn, we can get rolling again tomorrow and get some of this corn picked. So, see you in the morning. That's unnecessary. Good morning. It's pretty frigid out there. It's single digit temps. Uh, my pickup's still dropping in the temperature from the garage. But uh, right now it's at 6, but it keeps dropping, so... No, it should be fun getting everything started this morning, but it's supposed to get up into the 40s today, so that should help things, and uh, hopefully we can just get rolling again, so we'll see how it goes. So it looks like you got the everything put back together. These chains kind of had a different timing thing, so you had to actually kind of have it in time, because I don't think they're actual equal distances. Like, this is an equal distance on all of them. Like, I don't know, they kind of had a weird timing thing that we had to kind of go through. So, uh, hopefully we did it right. Got some scrap iron to haul in. Good old def. Frozen solid. Makes it handy out here. So this morning, uh, we didn't really plan ahead and get enough light fuel in our equipment. So, uh, this was the only really super cold night it was supposed to be. But um, it's warming up now, but I'm gonna go around and kind of put some number one and, and blend some of those diesel tanks. We kind of tried starting some and we could tell they were gonna gel up and some one actually did. So uh, we're gonna go around and put some number one diesel because that seems like that always works the best. We, have, we always put additives, like the truckers have been putting in um, winter, like uh, all that, just additives anyway that supposedly can lower your gelling point but it seems like number one is always the best way to work to actually get around that but um, from our experience we've tried quite a few different ones it just always seems like number one blending number one or, or straight number one is the only way to really get around it but um, that's what I'm doing now and uh, maybe this afternoon we'll get them fired up and going I guess I should explain what number one is for some of you guys um, Number one is just a different formulation of diesel that can, I'm not exactly sure what all it is different about it. Maybe some of you smart guys below can tell me what exactly number one does, but it's just a lighter form of, not a lighter, but it it's able to, it's got a lot lower gelling point than number two diesel. So if you ever see a pumps, number one and number two, number two is usually regular stuff and uh, number one's for colder weather. So we were just kind of waiting for the uh, snow to shake off, uh, melt off. We kind of tried it in the morning a little bit because my brother's combine was the only one that would run correctly since they got to stay in the heated shop overnight. We stabbed at it a few times and then finally the head still will get a little wet but we had checked our sieves and, and they're dry so everything's going okay for now anyway. The only thing I got is I must have a little bit of gunk over a sensor on my on one of my fuel filters because it'll kind of throw speak of the devil it's showing that my fuel, pr fuel pressure is a little bit low and I just must not have it all quite worked out it's probably in that sediment bowl but um, I don't know it's it's not running bad anyway so I'll uh, I'll check it here after a bit if it ain't broke don't fix it right even though the codes being flashed I'm lazy so a while back I got asked to maybe give a camera to somebody else for a different perspective on what we do on the farm. And, uh, <laughs> so in Nebraska, I don't know if it's just my family or just Nebraskans or just kind of, because I see other channels and they get everybody in and they got cameras all over. Well, out here, if you're going to rob a bank, you'd have better odds taking a camera with you because people are going to flip and run. If you had a gun, they might actually take you on, but if you have a camera, they're not gonna 
they're gone. So uh, I might be able to get some of them to actually maybe take a shot of something else, but they're not gonna be able to, uh, they're not gonna talk into a camera like this guy. So uh, if you're wondering, Wednesday morning, we're a uh, landmark implement out of Lexington letting us demo a 16-row uh, flex horn head, and that's kind of something I've never really heard till the other day when they were kind of mentioning about it. What it is is an outfit. Um, I think it says on the side of the head. I can't remember what it is now, but um, I'll show you right here. But uh, they ba they basically take a 16-row John Deere head maybe they do it to others too but they'll split it and make it able to flex in the center so when you get in hilly pivots like ours it's able to flex through the ditches and stuff and so it's on my brother's combine and he's running it right now and so we're gonna see how it works um, the only setback that we're kind of running into is um, this morning it's it's really humid it's cloudy and we still got a little bit of snow on the ground and so our heads are kind of wet the sieves are dry everything's flowing through okay just making that corn uh, stock tough which kind of uh, decreases your capacity a little bit so he's he's going having to go a little bit slower um, even, even I'm having to go slower just to make sure we get it all off and not kick it all over the sieve so uh, so it's, it's not quite ideal, but at least we're kind of getting an idea to see how well that head is working. It, it flexes quite a bit. Um, and so we're just kind of seeing how it works and uh, yeah, just seeing what's out there. I never knew about it till, like I said, the other day. So interesting stuff. He found a pivot track. Well, we got another field down, so we're uh, gonna quit for the night. So that'll do it for this video, guys. Hopefully on the next one, uh, we'll be wrapping up harvest here. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Been eating this dust all day.